Many Diablo 2 players overlook some very valuable magic items, either selling them to Charcy or not even picking them up in the first place. Because this game has so many various builds that require unique setups, items of all rarities can be best in class, even simple magic items. In this video, we're going to be looking at some of the most valuable magic items that you should be looking out for in all of your magic finding runs. Let's dive in. For this list, we're only focusing on items that are valuable and can fetch you a profit for finding them. Some magic items can feel like trophy finds, but because there are better options at different rarities, they might not necessarily be worth much. For example, cruel weapons of quickness were worth quite a bit back in previous patches, but with a sharp focus on F-Rep rares in today's market, they're not necessarily worth what they used to be. Another item, for example, that's super cool, but not necessarily worth much, is the fortuitous Ring of Fortune. People just don't pick up magic rings like they used to. These are certainly trophy finds, but a lot of best-in-class magic finding builds don't really work these into their setups, so therefore they're not necessarily worth much. Every item we'll talk about here is not only a trophy find, but it is actually worth something, and you'll have no trouble either selling it or trading it for other items that you might need. Number one, J-Mods and J-Stods. The J-Mod, or Jeweler's Monarch of Deflecting, is an extremely desirable endgame item. A Jeweler's Monarch can also be worth something if it spawns with faster hit recovery or life, but increased blocking is the most sought after suffix. Characters that deliver elemental damage love having these shields decked out with facets to lower their opponent's resistances, all while increasing their damage. For casters, these are often needed against physical damage characters that are absolute tanks, such as paladins, barbarians, or amazons. If these mods roll on a sacred targe for the paladin, due to its already high block percentage, those can be worth something as well. The value goes through the roof if the sacred targe also received a perfect class roll of either 45 to all resistances or 65% enhanced damage. These types of shields are most useful on melee paladins and also most valuable for that build because everything in melee is just super expensive. Number two, Jeweler's Armor of the Whale. It might seem like there's only two mods on this armor, but there are actually a number of other important variables that make these armors valuable. In order to roll with four open sockets, the jeweler's prefix needs to spawn on an elite quality armor. Four open sockets can roll on an exceptional quality armor, but here's the other thing. Heavy armors are less desirable because they slow your character's run walk speed. Any build that's using this armor is sacrificing Enigma to do so, so they need to run at an optimal speed. Although lesser rolls can be useful with a low level requirement for LLD, the elite armors take the cake for value here, especially when we combine them with the next item on this list. Number three, the 4015 jewel. This jewel needs no introduction. Any seasoned Diablo 2 player knows that it's worth something, but they might not know the reasons why. This magic jewel boasts two abilities that cannot be found on a jewel of any other rarity. Rare jewels cannot spawn with the increased attack speed mod, nor can they spawn with as much as 40% enhanced damage. It can be really good for hitting certain breakpoints while maximizing damage. There are also other magic jewels that are worth a pretty penny too, but the 4015 is the holy grail here. They can also be inserted into the next item on the list to craft another best in slot item. Number four, the Artisan's Diadem of Speed. Remember how we said faster run walk is important for characters who choose not to use Enigma? Well, this is a great source of it. Amazons often favor armors such as Fortitude or ones with enhanced damage and attack speed. They choose armors such as those over Enigma for the damage output, making faster run walk necessary. For certain matchups such as Necros, Amazons often overstack their attack speed due to the slowing effect of Clay Golem. When filled with 4015 jewels, this is the perfect item for that, along with some other creatures. Creative setups. Number five, Cunning Claws of Quickness. 
This tongue twister of a trap claw boasts the highest damage output for Lightning Century or Wake of Fire. The base claws on these are directly related to their value. Greater Talons or Runic Talons are the ideal bases for these due to their inherent weapon speed. If you find those versions of these cunning claws, the 40% IAS is ideal for not only reaching the IAS breakpoint, but also for overstacking it in case your opponent slows you. The real nail biter though, after finding these claws, is that you need to take them to Larzuk and pray for two open sockets. If you get two, amazing. You found an item of insane value. If you only get one, well. Greetings. Number six, 640 jabs. These javelins are extremely valuable, and despite what it might look like, there are actually three mods that roll on this item. The first is the of quickness suffix, which is responsible for giving the weapon 40% increased attack speed. But the plus six to javelin and spear skills is actually two rolls combined into one. The first roll comes from the class specific Amazon javelins, which naturally can spawn with the Lancers mod on their base. The second roll is the actual Lancers mod also spawning on those javelins. These are important for Javazons who are trying to maximize their lightning or poison damage output. Another plus six skills weapon that deserves a mention here is an enchant orb. However, plus six to enchant is usually not enough to make these worth something. They also need to spawn with fire mastery on them. Fire mastery also applies to the damage that you bestow upon characters that you enchant. So both enchant orbs and 640 javs have three inherent pieces that need to roll perfectly, and if they do, they can fetch a very nice profit for you. Number seven, 45 life skillers. This can include any grand charm that rolled 45 to life and plus one to a useful skill tab. Additionally, 10 to max damage on these is also valuable. These charms can only be found from Nilothok, Diablo, and Bale in regular magic finding areas. You can find them in the uber levels in the end game as well, but you'll need to spend a lot of time farming keys just to get the opportunity to do so. The difference in price between a useful 40 to life skiller versus a 45 to life one is huge because of this rarity. Another charm that deserves a mention in this section is of course the 32020 small charm. Every stat on this charm has a range that it can roll within. So even if you find a charm that contains all of these stats, the odds of it being perfect are one in 528. To find one of these small charms is to find a small fortune, especially when you consider that most people who want these want multiples. And that's the case not only for the 32020, but also for the 45 life skillers. These next items are honorable mentions. The first ones are plus six skill helms. While there are some pretty insane plus five bow melee helms, it's actually possible to find a plus six to battle orders helm. A lot of people asked in my previous videos why plus five bow helms didn't make the list. It's because they actually aren't as rare as people think and also there are better options. Another helm is the plus six NATO pelt, which also possesses some class specific glory. Some max block setups prefer variants of this helm with faster hit recovery or life. No matter what type of six skill helm you find, they definitely need to get two open sockets from Larzuk in order to even be considered semi-valuable in the market. And the next item, which I think people truly don't understand the real value of, are Helms of Life Everlasting. If I had to pick one item to call the next big thing in Diablo 2, which is weird to say for a 20 year old game, this would be it. The reason for this is that the Life Everlasting mod is an extremely efficient way to nerf nearly all of the PvP damage from an assassin's mind blast. While the skill will still be annoying for stunning your character and you'll still have to get out of the lock, at least you won't get completely PK'd by mind blast over the course of a very long duel. Additionally, Bahamut's Diadem of Life Everlasting is an immortal Sork's dream. Not like dream the rune word, but like one of the actual best helms you can find for the build. But in any case, the Life Everlasting mod is highly underrated in PvP and can be perfect against certain classes or for unique setups. 
And those are some of the rarest magic items that actually hold some value in Diablo 2. What's one of your favorite magic items to find in this classic game? Let us know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll catch you in the next one. Here we are dueling against TFC Priest, and for those who don't know, he's probably the most skilled Amazon player on Battle.net. He literally ran out of javelins and arrows trying to kill this thing. I'm excited that I can finally defeat Priest on one of my characters, but somehow it just it doesn't feel right.